You are listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Ari Whitner, and this is your NXT audio update for Wednesday, January 25, 2017. It is the final stop on the road to NXT TakeOver San Antonio this Saturday night on the WWE Network, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. in the Mountain Time Zone, 5 p.m. Pacific. It'll air at like 1 in the morning in the U.K., uh, maybe 2 in the morning. You know, for some reason, I'm never sure of the time zone difference. Um, you can also watch it on demand if you don't feel like staying up till 2 in the morning to watch it. You know, but you do you, people in the U.K. But uh, let's go through the final show here before TakeOver. As with pretty much every final show before TakeOver, um, not a whole lot happens in the ring as it pertains to uh, the show. Uh, they do a bunch of interviews. They even throw in an angle or two. But ultimately, the matches that happen on these shows before TakeOver are generally meaningless um, and are there to fill time. Um, but and like our first segment, you know, they may pay off down the line. As Ember Moon took on Liv Morgan up first. Last week, Liv just could not allow Ember Moon to challenge the winner of the Saturday's Fatal 4-Way match. So Morgan is here to get destroyed in the opener. Good news, bad news situation for Liv. The good news is she lasted longer than the 28 seconds that she lasted against Asuka. The bad news is that Ember Moon just beat her up for longer. At one point, they ended up in a small package ball and proceeded to roll all over the ring, which was, forgive me, the fakest looking thing on wrestling this year. But despite being the fakest looking thing you'll see on wrestling this year, it was the only thing to get any response from this crowd. This was a dead crowd tonight, and this was one of the few things that actually got them to react. Actually... You know, I didn't read. I don't read the spoilers from the taping, but I seem to recall that the last two weeks have been dead as well, and I think these were all just the same tapings. So who knows? Maybe that crowd is just you know a little dead this time around. Um, Ember hit a knee to the face, hit a fallaway slam, and locked on the cross face. A couple fans tried to get behind Liv, which apparently was enough for her to get out of it. Uh, Morgan made her come back and locked on a guillotine, but Moon picked her up and literally heaved her over the top rope like a 100-pound sack of potatoes. Moon threw her back in the ring, hit the eclipse, and picked up the win um, before shaking Morgan's hand afterwards. Andrade Cien Almas cut a promo in 90% Spanish, building up his match with Roderick Strong. He planned to kick Strong in the face. Roddy walked up, taking offense to this, daring Almas to kick him in the face now. Cien walked off, but then attacked Strong from behind. Almas screamed at Strong in Spanish as he left the former ROH champ lying. Um, before continuing, I would like to make my official Royal Rumble prediction. A prediction that Stevie J has already said will not happen, but I'm really bad at predictions, so here's another one. This prediction I made in August, and I'm going to say it again. Finn Balor returns from injury, wins the Rumble, and uh, goes on to Mania. And mind you, I also once picked John Laurinaitis to win the Royal Rumble in 2012. When I made when I picked Laurinaitis, I even had a very sound storyline-driven argument as to why he would win. Of course, if you recall, not only did he not win, he wasn't even in the match. Next up, we got a video package for DIY versus the Authors of Pain. I think this is going to be a better match than people think, but they, then again, I am the one that just predicted that Finn Balor was going to win the Royal Rumble. So we'll see. No Way Jose defeated Kona Reeves in our next match. This was the match that got set up last week when Jose and Reeves had a backstage confrontation. 
They challenged each other to meet in the ring, and then apparently got lost on the way because we never saw them again. Luckily, this week, they were pointed in the right direction, and we got our match. Corey Graves continued his gimmick of saying something stupid that people probably like and I dislike, this time accusing Kona Reeves of catfishing, saying that Kona is one of those people who probably makes an online profile of somebody else in order to meet people. Um, probably not illegal, but, you know, it's, some, it's something really weird to say about one of the wrestlers. Kona took the advantage by dancing a little to get Jose to drop his guard, but uh, Kona took him out. I want to point out that Reeves licks his hands a lot, which was brought up in commentary. My thought is it's possible that he just had some delicious finger foods before the match and is still savoring the taste of them. Jose made his comeback, missed the wind-up punch on the first attempt, but hit it the second time for the win. After the match, Jose attempted to be interviewed, but Elias Sampson, of all people, strummed out into the arena. As always, it's difficult to hear what Elias says uh, because he gets booed way too much. Jose cut him off, told him that his music sucked, and he came up with a brand new song just for Almas. And I'm sorry, just for Almas. Yikes. Just for Elias Sampson. Uh, let's try to get the names right this time. Just for Elias Sampson. And he set the song up to the theme of No Way Jose singing Just Drift away, just drift away. Samson got mad about this and jumped up on the apron to attack. However, he got punched in the face, so he walked away. In a pre-tape promo, Ty Dillinger said he's going to beat Eric Young no matter who he brings to the ring a takeover, leading to Eric Young in action versus the debuting Chris Atkins. Atkins is from Australia and is a good-looking guy. Young, as you might recall, is from Canada, and while I'm sure there are women who find him attractive, um, if he has a wife, she's probably even one of them. Damo has a new name. It's Gillian Dane, and like everyone listening to this, I agree. Damo sounded better. Atkins got no offense in this match. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Young picked up the win with the wheelbarrow neckbreaker. After a middle rope elbow, uh, Young cut a post-match promo saying that Dillinger made the wrong choice last week when he was offered a spot in Sanity. And then uh, Gillian Dane gave a running senton to Chris Atkins. We saw a video of TM61's win over the Revival last week, including Revival injuring the knee of Shane Thorne after the match, and said that Thorne will be out for seven to nine months. We got our video package for Shinsuke Nakamura and Bobby Roode in your main event, the NXT Championship match, this Saturday night. They traced it all the way back to Nakamura's signing and brought it all the way forward to the match this weekend. Just as a reminder, this Saturday night, live on the WWE Network at 8 p.m., NXT TakeOver San Antonio, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bobby Roode for the NXT title. Asuka, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Nikki Cross, Fatal 4-Way for the Women's Title, DIY versus the Authors of Pain for the NXT Tag Team Championship, Andrade C.N. Almas versus Roderick Strong, and finally, Eric Young versus Ty Dillinger, all of which this Saturday night. Main event segment, the final segment before TakeOver. We got a face-off featuring the four ladies in the Fatal 4-Way. It started with Peyton and Billy coming out saying that they proved they can beat Asuka up a few weeks ago and that they owe the crazy one, meaning Nikki, a beating. Nikki walked to the ring with her full entrance, but before she could say or do anything, Asuka literally ran to the ring, causing Peyton and Billy to scatter like mice. Uh, Nikki and Asuka stood face-to-face -face and argued, but they were attacked by Peyton and Billy. Uh, Nikki and Asuka sent them both flying out of the ring. 
which was the cue for security to come flying down to get between Asuka and Nikki. However, the ladies beat the heck out of the much larger men, which, you know, just made them both, you know, look even better. Like, they didn't just beat up normal, undersized security geeks. They beat up large, you know, built men. And you saw Asuka kicking the hell out of them and Nikki Cross just heaving them out of the ring. Um, Asuka laid out Nikki with a spin kick. Security grabbed Asuka's ankle and dragged her out of the ring. Nikki, not wanting to be outdone, did a crossbody off the top rope onto the pile on the floor. Billy and Peyton were shown looking concerned as the show came to an end. So that does it for this week. Like I said, this Saturday's TakeOver. Enjoy TakeOver. Enjoy the Royal Rumble on Sunday. I'll be back next Wednesday. Thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you again in seven days.